Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I'm going to press on reading our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, written by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. Uh, we are on Chapter 5 still, which is called uh, Lip Service to the Public Health, and the subtitle is The Public Health Comes First. And um, I want to apologize for splitting a gut the last couple of days. I think it's very important for us to press on and read this information because I it's only going to get worse and we need to understand how these people came to these ideas and what's happened. So I'm going to press on without much more of saying anything. Not only is it permissible but essential to study these questions as well as many many others concerning how radiation affects man such, such academic pursuits are of the highest interest and ultimately may benefit human beings in ways currently unappreciated. But it is of even greater importance to realize that the existence of a question is not the equivalent of existence of an answer. Academic questions take time and effort to solve. The public health cannot wait. The public health cannot be compromised by hopes that something will appear through research to mitigate a hazard. That is precisely the attitude that has taken on in TEPCO and in Japan. Wow. Holy fuck. So they did everything exactly opposite of what John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin suggested. Some rat bastards. Okay, I'm sorry. No, we must take the conservative, sound approach that takes the evidence as it is, and we must proceed not with Russian roulette, but with sensible, humane caution in the new technological areas. Erring on the side of caution doesn't kill or maim human beings. Throwing caution to the wind, a promoter's specialty, sounds bold but kills human beings. Madison Avenue can paint a sexy picture of technology. Main Street needs a less flamboyant approach. Repression and reprisal. By 1967, we had become thoroughly convinced that the entire approach to the handling of public health and safety aspect of nuclear energy development was erroneous. Such fundamental errors of the requirement, excuse me, such fundamental errors as the requirement that the public prove atomic energy projects unsafe rather than the atomic energy proponents prove the technology safe troubled us deeply. The growing resentment of our biomedical efforts by plowshare enthusiasts was especially worrisome, for this technology appeared to us but at that time to be one of the worst conceivable blundering concepts dreamed up by man. How to, view dis how to view discriminate and indiscriminate spewing of radioactivity into the environment as a reasonable atomic energy project we can simply no longer understand. By 1967, folks. This program of digging canals, harbors, and making mountain cuts, diverting rivers by blowing up nuclear explosives, and thereby freely distributing long-lived radioactive materials into the environment cannot be done unless one already has made a value judgment that such projects can be equated in value with a certain number of human lives, present and future and an irreversible contribution to pollution of the earth. The suggestion to Goffman of trying to raise the allowable radiation dose threefold is itself an indication that plowshare programs are clearly predicted, predicated on the idea that fairly sizable human exposure will be required. Wow. Let me read that last sentence again. The suggestion to Goffman 
that trying to raise the allowable radiation dose threefold is itself an indication that plowshare programs are clearly predicated on the idea that fairly sizable human exposure will be required. Recently, an AEC spokesman, unnamed, was asked when the current radiation exposure guidelines it was asked when the current radiation exposure guidelines federally allowed might be reached. The AEC generally claims they had no intention of ever reaching the exposure levels. The spokesman declined to predict when the limit might be reached, noting that the uncertainties of the plowshare programs, among other things. It would be hard to believe peaceful nuclear explosives can be used in any quantity without delivering appreciable radiation doses to man and other members of the biosphere. We have come to regard this program of peaceful nuclear explosives as pernicious in every respect. It seems difficult to imagine benefits to society that would require such a program. Needless to say, the plowshare program enthusiasts above all, are desperately furious about the thought of not being able to carry their program through with the irradiation of human beings. Not maliciously, but simply because all of their projects ultimately require such radiation. We cannot subscribe to the idea that because nuclear bombs are cheap, they have to be good for something. We cannot subscribe to Edward Teller's statement to Governor Gravel that if we can explode enough of the bombs, we'll never know what benefits they can provide mankind. Holy crap. We certainly can know and do know about the abundance of harm they can do. Next subtitle, A, Dudley, a Deadly Way to Increase Natural Gas. Um, okay, I'll keep going a little bit for five more minutes. While every project of the Peaceful Nuclear Explosive Program of AEC and Lawrence Radiation Laboratory holds pernicious potentialities, most pernicious of all at the time is that which proposes to stimulate natural gas production by underground explosions of nuclear bombs in gas-bearing regions. Preliminary experiments have demonstrated already that increased natural gas flow can be achieved through such underground explosions. The commercial appetite is whetted by this, and we now hear rumblings of a future of thousands of such underground nuclear explosions to provide us abundant amounts of natural gas, especially because the nuclear bombs themselves are now cheap, courtesy of the American taxpayer. That's the secret ingredient in fracking, you guys. One little problem has reared its ugly head, namely that natural gas recovered so far has been radioactive, either due to tritium, a radionuclide byproduct of hydrogen bombs, or krypton-85, a radioactive byproduct of the, quote, dirty, unquote, fission bombs. Hmm. Krypton 85. The plowshare advocates suggest that the choice of hydrogen bombs versus dirty fission bombs rests upon which one makes the, un makes the recovered natural gas less radioactive. When faced with the question concerning the desirability of piping radioactive gas into the homes of unsuspecting public consumers and thereby irradiating the consumers who are buying the poison gas, the plowshare advocates have a ready answer. We don't deliver the gas into the homes if it is too radioactive. And there's the rub. They will dilute the gas with non-radioactive gas to such an extent that no one using such mixed radioactive gas in the home will exceed the Federal Radiation Council guideline dosages of radiation. What this translates into is we won't produce any more cancers, leukemias, and genetic deformities than we are legally permitted to. How utterly generous. 
I'm going to stop here. I'm just at 10 minutes. I'm on page 113 on the second paragraph. I have to stop because I have to go pick up a friend of mine from the airport at 10.30. And it's 10.15. So I'm going to um, pick this up again tomorrow, you guys. Uh, thanks for waiting for me for a few days. And those of you that went to Helen Caldecott seminar, I hope you put some set, some YouTube videos up and share. I am definitely going to be protesting in Salem on uh, 3 11 15. Mimi German is having her a protest in Portland at, Pine, at the Pioneer Park, uh, and that is on 3 11 at noon. And I believe that. Um, there is going to be some people, I think, I don't know if it's through Eugene Peaceworks or whom, but there's a national online thing where people are having protests at the Japanese consulate's office, and they are going to do a protest on 311 at 3 p.m., which I think I'm going to join because my protest is going to go from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. I'm going to be handing out flyers and free radiation glasses again and talking to, hopefully, uh, elected officials or employees of the... Um, I don't know, the government that walk in and out of the state capitol and people that go there on a regular basis. I'm going to end here. Ciao, you guys. And um, I think we have to put on more than our courage. For, I, for myself, I tell you what I have to do. Regenerate my heart. Like, I, I must work on not feeling heartbroken. And there... I believe that there's a way to rejuvenate the hope and spirit. I think I reflect a lot of the anxiety of the people that pay attention to this. And, you know, um, it's super important for us to be happy and to just love each other and treat each other kindly. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Sorry to rattle on. <laughs> Ciao.